Princess Enkiza Naaman was born sometime around 1350 BC, the third of six daughters born to King Akhenaten and Queen Nefertiti. For over 3000 years, much of her life has been a mystery, a fascinating patchwork of bizarre facts and strange omissions. Though her story is remarkable in its own right, it's Enkiza Naaman's half-brother who catapulted her to historical prominence, King Tutankhamun, or King Tut, is the most famous Egyptian pharaoh on the planet because of his intact, treasure-laden tomb found in 1922. Enkiza Naaman was both King Tut's half-sister and his wife. It was a different world, Egypt was experiencing dramatic religious upheaval, and a dynasty hung in the balance. Incestuous marriages among the ruling class weren't unprecedented. In fact, Enkiza Naaman's marriage to Tutankhamun might not have been her first inter-family marriage, or even her last. Precariously placed and with little time to consolidate power, a young Tutankhamun wed his teenage sister, Enkiza Naaman, and together they quickly retreated from their father's radical religion. Pressured, perhaps, by the priests who were a vital pillar of royal power, they changed their own names. Tutankhaten, meaning the living image of Aden, changed the suffix in his name to Amun, swapping his father's sun disk for the traditional sun god of the Egyptian pantheon. It was a frightening time, both the king and queen were very young and in charge of running the entire country. Tut and his bride initially relied on powerful advisors to govern the ancient nation a policy that may have eventually proved their undoing. Tuts and Ankis and Ammon tried without success to have children. The mummies of two female fetuses, five to eight months in age, were found in Tut's tomb. Genetic testing possible because of the royal embalmer's skill confirms the unborn daughters belong to Tut and a nearby mummy, most likely Ankis and Ammon. At just 18 years old, King Tut died. Queen Ankiza Naaman was left a widow at 21. At this time, the young queen's grandfather and King Tut's advisor, I, proclaimed that they would marry. I wanted to secure his claim to the throne. Queen Ankiza Naaman strongly opposed this union. She wrote to, King of the Hittite Empire and asked if she could marry one of his many sons. The king agreed and sent his son, Prince Zananza to Egypt. Unfortunately, the prince and his travel group were murdered at the border to Egypt. Queen Ankiza Naaman was forced to marry King Ai. Ai he sat on the throne and married Ankiza Naaman to become the new pharaoh ruler of Egypt. He was above 61 when he married her and a blue ring has been found during the excavations which has both Ai's and Ankiza Naaman's name together engraved on it. No more is known of Anks and Ammon after this incident. I ruled for three years but no mention is made of her as his wife nor in any other capacity except for a ring which might indicate she was married to I. The ring is considered inconclusive evidence, however, as it may simply reference the ceremonial marriage for Tutankhamun's funeral and not an actual marriage. When I died, Horem Hape took the throne and, to legitimize his rule, instituted religious orthodoxy, claiming that the old gods had chosen him to return the country to traditional values and to erase the name of the heretic king's family from history. All of the public monuments raised by Akhenaten during the Amarna period were destroyed or defaced and Horemheb also tried to eliminate all trace of Tutankhamun. After that she disappeared from history, although no monuments show her as a royal consort on the walls of Ai's tomb it is Te. I's senior wife, not Ankiza Naaman, who appears as queen. She probably died during or shortly after his reign and no burial has been found for her yet. If you like this content, please do not forget to subscribe, thanks for watching.